I, actually, I, I, I've been meaning to ask you this because if you think about Bitcoin and one of the narratives going around in terms of the bear square is that it's just a, a vehicle for, for wealthy Chinese to get their money out of China. Wouldn't you expect the exact opposite situation, whereas you would see them buying in Asian hours and then selling in, uh, in European and, and uh, North American hours? You would think so. Um, and I mean, there's different kind of qualifications on market structure. So I do think there is something to that. And that's also partially why I think China cracked down on it. So there's a lot of Bitcoin mining in China, which essentially means that domestic producers were converting Chinese fiat uh, and, and resources into mining Bitcoin that was non KYC. Uh, so non, you know, registered and they had they had Bitcoin and then they could take that and move that Bitcoin anywhere in the world. And so that that was kind of a leaky valve in, in China's kind of closed capital account. Uh, and, you know, for a while, that was very small. So China didn't care too much. We had kind of every year we have a new headline like China bans Bitcoin and it never actually does anything. Uh, whereas this time they actually seem to crack down on it. So any, you know, large scale industrial miners were essentially banned. They moved out of the country and they've kind of, you know, at least not not maybe not sealed that exit point, but they really kind of slowed that down. And so there's still Chinese participants engaging in various offshore exchanges. There's various ways around that because of how kind of, you know, sticky Bitcoin is in terms of getting around those types of blocks. Uh, but they, they did go after kind of the, the, the low hanging fruit, you could say. And, and uh, not to go too much on a little bit of a Bitcoin tangent, but I, I do uh, acknowledge that you are uh, know a lot more than me. You've, you've got the call in terms of investing in it, you know, bang on, you've been terrific and uh, approaching it with a, with a really kind of detached, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, unemotional v- viewpoint. I, I would love to, to hear whether you worry about China continuing to crack down on Bitcoin as being a risk to your thesis. And specifically, I think about uh, the 1933 decree when... Uh, the president of the United States declared holding uh, gold illegal. Uh, could you see something like that happening in China? And if so, is it something that keeps you up at night? Not really. I do think that the China ban probably contributed to this, uh, you know, this recent kind of, you know, not not super recent because we've had kind of a resumed bull market to some extent. But the the, the weakness we had in Bitcoin and, and various cryptos back in the, say, the late spring, early summer, I think the China ban was was one of the catalysts there, along with Grayscale no longer buying and a couple other variables. Um, and one of the things to keep in mind, if we look at say the 1933, you know, ban on gold for Americans, you know, gold went on to outperform Treasuries for the next like four decades. Uh, and it's one of those things where things are generally banned not because they're about to perform poorly, but they're because the local currency is about to not do very well in it, say, real terms. Uh, and so it's, it's hard to say exactly what Bitcoin would do, but one country banning it is, is not really, I think, the, the end of the world. I, I would say a big tail risk would be if the United States or, or Europe tried to ban ownership of it. Uh, but I think there's there's kind of different levels of bans. So an extreme case is saying you literally can't own it. So it's actually pretty hard to do with Bitcoin. So even China has not really done that. Instead, what they say is, we're going to sever the financial system from, you know, crypto exchanges. Uh, so that kind of goes after those fiat on ramps, which kind of is like the low hanging fruit that's super easy to enforce. Right. And do you think that's going to happen? My base case would be no, because we're seeing that it's, at least in the West, it's gotten, I mean, it's already happened in China for the most part, but it's in the West, at least in, the, in say, North America, it's gotten large enough in my view. And there's like politicians that own it and there are donor class that own it. Uh, that, you know, I think that there's a pretty significant force there, uh, but it's something to keep watching. It's something to basically have on your list of risks for the asset class. 